Are producers getting a little stuck up nowadays? I never thought I'd say that because producers were traditionally always the ones that were at the bottom of the totem pole when it came to the music business hierarchy. Producers have dealt with a lot of abuse and exploitation over the years. You know, for a while we were the butt of every joke, we were always in the background. We would have to fight for credit to say nothing of payment. We always had to convince people of our value in spite of the fact that we would create the basis of music. And in my opinion, things started changing recently. Suddenly people started caring more about producers to the point where names like Metro Boomin and Murder on a Beat became as big as some of the major label artists they were producing music for. And they did it without rapping or singing on the songs themselves, uh, which is a way that a lot of the super producers of previous generations gained that level of, of name recognition. Platforms like BeatStars helped create a new producer middle class. And social media sites and platforms such as YouTube, Discord, and Reddit created an international producer community that really felt like a community where people were sharing information, resources, and collaborating with the click of a button. Now that doesn't mean that the abusive producers suddenly stopped. I mean, to this day, we're still hearing horror stories about producers fighting for credit or having their beats stolen and remade, of checks never being signed, and of royalties that never made it to a producer's bank account. And a lot of us see all of that and start reacting. I mean, even if we've never been in that position, we start assuming that the game is just rigged against us as producers and beat makers. And so we kind of grow this hard shell preemptively and we have these conversations about hypotheticals. I'd never let that happen to me. I would never sign a, con a, a contract like that. I'm gonna get money up front for everything. I'm not giving out free beats to anybody. I've had moments like that myself. Especially after the new year, you saw a lot of producers posting on social media that this year, no free beats, no favors, no handouts, and buy my beats spam started filling up the inbox of rappers and some producers. I get that stuff too, stop that, I hate it. And we started seeing the memes poking fun of rappers who didn't pay for beats yet rapped about money start re-emerging. And I think a lot of that is just the nature of the beginning of the new year where a lot of us just wanna set boundaries and set goals for ourselves. And a lot of those goals are financial. We wanna start turning our love for making beats and producing songs into our livelihood. It's a confusing time to be a producer. We want placements, we want credit, we want to, to make a living doing what we love. And of course we wanna be treated with respect. And also the spotlight is on us in a way that it never has been on producers before. So our expectations are changing a lot and sometimes they're in conflict with one another. Uh, for example, I get DMs all the time from producers asking me how to get placements. I got one earlier today uh, from a producer whose oldest post was last year. He was telling me how frustrated he was with not getting placements. He just started using Instagram last year. I think a lot of producers want to skip steps because a lot of producers are winning now more than ever and and so it seems as though placements and six-figure online beat licensing incomes should be a given and yeah a brand new producer could get a major placement seemingly overnight that kind of happened with um Isaac beats i believe that's how you pronounce his name who produced ybn namir's rubbing off the paint that was a hit record but that's not typical and it's not realistic to go from making your first 50 beats to signing a million dollar publishing deal because you just produced Roddy Rich's last hit single. Now it took me nearly 10 years just to get a major placement, but you don't wanna hear my story right now. So let's talk about little TJ's main producer, JD on a track, who I interviewed for BeatStars uh, last year, I believe. Shout out to him. He was recently on Producer Grind, also shout out to Producer Grind, and he was telling his story about linking up with Little TJ, going platinum, also going gold, getting a bunch of plaques, and I just want to share a portion of his story that they actually shared on Instagram because I think it's just so important, especially for, for beat makers and producers right now, currently. So let's break this down. Um, I watched the full interview. I recommend that you watch the whole interview too. Because I was working with the smaller ones, and by the smaller ones, you can get to the bigger ones. That's how I did it. Because you said TJ only had like 10K followers when you reached out to him, right? Bro, he had like around that, like 10 to 12, something like that. And somehow, bro, I don't know, like, I felt that he was, that he was next. Yeah. That he was like going all the way up. 
don't know how to explain that, but sometimes I, I have this feeling. And when I have this feeling, I go by my feeling. I always go by my feeling. And I had this feeling somehow. And I knew, you know, I knew. Now, I, I want to talk about this for a second because I feel like when, a, when an artist is at like 10 to 12K followers, they're still in that range where producers are going to hit them and be like, yo, what's your budget kind of thing? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. they're, not, they're not like willing to but just, me, I wasn't just on send that. it to them. I wasn't that. I was just like... I, I knew that he was going next. So you didn't, have, you never asked him like, oh, I want this much money. Nah, I never did it. Yeah. Never mm. did it. I think that's big too because like that's, that's one of the things we talk about that fine line. But I think right. like in producers' heads, it's like, man, it's like a number of followers that they have to yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you got like 50K and above followers, like, all right, I'll send you a pack. But if yeah, they got right. like, if you got like 5K, well, 10K. I, I, I just did it because I felt. And right. I did, I, 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 I made it because of, of the way I was feeling because I knew bro somehow I don't know how bro I, it, it was like a sign type type thing like it was like a angel telling me yo I don't know bro but I had that you know it was strong and I knew I knew I just knew so you was can you be more specific like when you heard him you, you felt like he had a gift that was you mean exactly he was born with a gift bro JD started making beats around the time Crank That was popular so that was a while ago he taught himself production but he also taught himself English that's major dedication that's an obstacle that maybe a lot of us take for granted he focused on learning and improving and growing so he was doing a lot of I guess you could call it meta analysis he was looking at himself and his process and finding ways to to improve that and he didn't get a placement for a while I mean if he started around the time that that Soulja Boy's first hit was on the charts that's at least a decade ago but I think most importantly he sent beats out to a rapper who wasn't a superstar he liked Lil TJ's music, he believed in it, and he reached out. A lot of producers are focused on networking vertically. Um, what I mean is they're sending their beats, or they're trying to send, or they're focused on working with uh, recording artists who are higher up than they are. I mean, the, the producer might have a catalog of 100 beats, no resume, no uh, industry experience, no no production experience beyond just making beats by themselves, but they want to send beats to a, a multi-platinum rapper. And I'm not telling you not to try. If you have a chance to send beats to Drake right now and you've only made 20 beats ever, I'm not going to tell you not to send that email. Send that email. But I'm also saying don't feel like you're above networking horizontally. In other words, working with people around you or at your level, not necessarily physically around you like the people in the room. There's no one in this room right now. I'm a very lonely person. But there are rappers in my city that I can work with that aren't superstars yet. For example, Ted Park. I had a record with him that, that charted. It was it was the first time I've ever signed to a major label as a producer. Um, and we signed on for a very fair deal um, for our single, Hello. That was a couple years ago. And it was because we knew each other. We had known each other for a while. He was from my city. And we just made it happen. We just recorded a song together and, and started releasing music together. So of course I'm saying work with people who have musical chemistry with you, whose music you actually like, uh, who you respect, who you get along with, and make sure they respect your music and they respect you as a person. Don't just be a doormat, but don't be stuck up and bougie about this whole process either. Little TJ wasn't a multi-platinum rapper when, when JD on the track reached out to him and sent him beats. A lot of the top producers and rappers of tomorrow are today's no names and that's not to, to take anything away from them or their talent they're just not there yet if someone shows that they have talent and shows that they have work ethic in the case of uh, Lil TJ right he had already amassed what 10,000 followers J JD was looking at him he liked his talent he liked his potential he saw that people liked what he was doing that made sense to him so instead of being frustrated that you can't send your beats to the top artists of today and instead of feeling like you don't have opportunities because of that, look around you. There are opportunities everywhere. There might be an opportunity right under your nose that you don't even realize. So appreciate you watching. Leave a comment. It's your boy DJ Academics. I'm out. Actually, do subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100K. Much success to you in 2020 and beyond. Peace.